was actually just such a wild chapter. It really was. I like the what I'm getting out of this chapter. It makes me feel like Blackbeard and Ace all over again. Like the possible stipulate, like the possible outcome of there being like some b giant war over this. Because Garp is not only Luffy's grandfather, but he's the hero of the Marines. So both yeah. of those sides are not just gonna sit there and be like, "Oh, well, you killed our guy," you know. They're both that, gonna go for blood. But that's how we got to where we are now because Garp is only there because of Kobe and yeah. because he's the new generation hero of the Marines, the same way that Garp is like the old guard version of it. And and that was Garp literally throwing off like the red tape. He was like, no, yeah. we're going to go do this. And who was it? I think it was Tsuru or someone who was like, you know, you're supposed to be reporting this stuff, right? How long have you been a Marine? You know this. And he was just like, nah, man, we're going in. We're going to go and just rescue Kobe because that's why we're here. So I think that was like, especially because it was Blackbeard, very yeah. paramount war, very like yes. same instigating kind of factors. But now it's like stacking on top because it's Kobe and Garp at um, <clears throat> at the Hachinosu. Yeah. Um, and whoever's about to arrive to save Garp, because I don't think this is Kobe's big moment. I think oh, someone no. else is going to do something. Um, even if it's Kuzan stopping... Um, See, that's, that's my name. first thought is Kuzan exactly. actually stopping it because I'm like, are, are we really just going to get somebody coming out of the blue over at Hachinosu? Nobody just rolls up to Hachinosu for no reason. Like I was thinking, because like, know. but here's the thing. We've confirmed other people to be on the way. Smoker is, well, not on the way, but Smoker's around and they're yeah. like talking about it and like they'll either go to Egghead or they'll go here because they're relatively close together, you know, like in terms of the world. Yeah. But like even Smoker, <laughs> Even if Smoker arrives now, out of yeah. absolutely nowhere, I what's was, he gonna do? <laughs> like, see, that's what I was, unless Oda gave him some mad power up, like he awakened his fruit and can do something crazy, I don't see him stopping what's going on. But even an awakened uh, Moku Moku no Mi against this Shima Shima, like that power yeah, is actually no. crazy. It's like Pika, but way more useful, yeah. like it's great. See, what, like, I, what, are you, my, what are you gonna do? In my video I was talking about, I was like, how is this power even working though? Because doesn't, like, the ocean stops you for, or weakens you while you use Devil Fruit powers. And if he is the island, he is completely being touched by the ocean. Completely. So, and so I'm wondering if this, it this. affects his body directly, or or the island's not even part of his body at that point. It's just he's controlling it. So, so there's two, like, main things that I see here. The first one... I mean, it's it's about the percentage of water that's affecting your body, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can walk in ankle deep water perfectly fine, hundred percent, up to like halfway up your shin, no worries. Like you can still be fine. Um, it was handled very weirdly in that movie, The Adventures of Nebulandia. That was very weird because, and I think there's a lot of misconceptions for that because they were like, there's the mist around here. And around the water which is not how it works you actually have to be submerged yeah um there's there's, there's a lot of things i should actually do a, a devil fruit uh, sorry not a de yeah a devil fruit against water kind of like cutting away and looking at the facts of what we yeah. have it might be good to do a collab on that but for this one the two things that we need to look at are the percentage of the of the body that's covered and whether the body is affected right mm -hmm. so the shima shima no mi just in essence would be kind of useless if most of the island was underwater, right? Like yes. if it was a sensible world where you, like Wano, Wano is a great example because Wano is almost entirely submerged. Yes. If you use the Shima Shima no Mi on Wano, I think you'd struggle. I think you would have the devil fruit weakness gotcha. because of all that water in there because most of the actual land is yeah, submerged. Old Wano underwater. is underwater, all of it. Exactly. Yes. Even though it's rainwater, we've seen Big Mom luffy uh like a bunch fall in that water devil fruit weakness yeah. goes jack uh well i suppose that was you know anyway jack's so, a fish man so he just probably walked right out though well no he wouldn't be able to move that's the thing so oh, yeah, that's the second right. thing to consider is it doesn't stop you from using your abilities and we know this canonically because of uh, arlong park because mm -hmm. luffy's neck was stretched yeah. all the way out yes. the water so he couldn't move but his devil fruit ability was not hindered at all. Yes. And that's very interesting because sea prism stone does hinder your ability. Yes, you can't use it. That's the whole it. point of the shot. Yeah. 
but the sea doesn't do that. So the thing that has the essence of the sea does something that the sea doesn't do. You know, that <laughs> that's a very interesting thing. Yeah. Um, so if, in the case of the Shima Shima no Mi, I think it's because if, you know, the microphone here is like the sea level, most of the island is up, yeah. especially in the case of Hachinosu. It's a bit of a hill and then there's the, the, the head of the thing. Yeah. And there's comparatively very little under here. So it's not like it's above his waist or anything like it's that. It's like he's angled deep pretty much. Exactly. Yeah. And the other thing to consider is there's two things in this chapter, this being one of them, that the island is affecting his body. It's not like Pika. The whole thing is his body and the whole thing is affected as if it was his body, right? Mm -hmm. Number one, because of, you know, like the whole water thing and he is the island, like that, the whole, con the concept of the fruit essentially, right? Yes. The second thing is if you check in the chapter uh, a couple of pages in where Garp starts throwing the flaming pirates at people, which is just amazing. I yes, love that. That was epic. I was, I was a little bit confused about who's talking here um, because he says pirate jack-o'-lantern. And I think that's Garp using a new named attack, throwing pi <laughs> flaming pirates at people. Yeah. <laughs> but it's Pizarro talking after that saying, what are you trying to do? Destroy the whole island. But he says... It's hot. Stop. Like, ow. Like, he's he's exclaiming because Garp is throwing all these flaming pirates around because Pizarro gets hurt. Pizarro gets hurt by just being attacked. Whereas Pika could control the arm and be in that arm and then retreat before Zoro cut it. Pika, uh, sorry, Pizarro seems to actually be affected by everything that's happening here. So that seems to be a fundamental difference of the fruit. So I think he's not affected by the water because it's not deep enough. Um, and because of the nature of the fruit, he's, he is the whole island. Yeah. So if it was it's only in this top bit of the island, it's not anywhere else. Um, I think it's, it's more that he is the entire island, which is why he's got such versatile control. And, and he's not like Pika, who can only sink into stone because he had the, you know, yeah. Ishi Ishi no Mi. He can sink into anything. And that blew my mind when we first saw him because he was sinking up out of the wood. And at first, I was like, I thought this was like a Pika kind of deal, but he's coming yeah. through wood at the moment. Is this like a, you know, like a Ryokugu kind of situation? Yeah. But it's more like than you can of face simulation, it's a wood simulation. It's wood assimilation, but it, it's actually island assimilation. Yeah. He can assi uh, assimilate with practically anything on the island. And I wonder where that, you know, like if I leave my, if I leave my glass in at the Hachinosu, can he control that? Can he become that? Like yeah, it, no. It's, it's interesting where that border goes. What, like, yeah, for sure. Like, the, like, just anything this dude can do is like, can you imagine they get to the red line and he got into the red line? The, what he could do to the entire, the dude has the, like, the power to destroy the world. Like, the that's thing, white beard destruction power and, or more. Would it work though? Would the Shima Shima no Mi work on the only continent on the planet? Because it's not an island. It's a continent and it's huge. So maybe it's too big yeah, and maybe. therefore out of his restriction. But then, you know, that makes me wonder since we, we have pretty strong evidence that the Grand Line, sorry, the Red Line is manufactured. It's not yes. naturally occurring, mostly because of the whales that smash, like Laboon, who smashed their head against it, which kind of indicates it's not supposed yeah. to be there. Or that was never part. used to be there. Yeah. Yeah. What devil fruit created that? If it, I'm assuming it was a devil fruit, but if the Shima Shima no Mi probably can't even like affect that, and you'd need, I think Luffy's strong enough now, or Kaido's strong enough now to take down the red line, even if it's only oh, in yeah. one spot. Oh, I believe. I I'm think it you. takes a lot of doing, you know? Like, I don't think Luffy... Well, doesn't the red line go completely around the globe? Like, it goes so all the way around. the whole globe. Yeah, yeah. it's like Jormungandr. It takes up the whole thing. So even if you were going to break one little part of that like under Marisa, that would take instance. a lifetime you know how thick that thing is like it's what is it 10 kilometers up ten thousand meters up or something like that it's that's huge that's massive man. that's not counting so, how like, far it goes below the surface you'd have to move all of it well yeah, even because exactly. there still has to be land to put the rock on so you're having to move the entire thing so it depends because fishman island is underneath Marie Joie. They're, mm -hmm. they're above and below the red, the, gra the red line. I had it right the first time. Ah, that is right. Yeah. I so about so that. Where, does, where does the red line connect <laughs> to anything? Like, 
where does it go if it doesn't go all the way down to the core like is it just a ring around the planet that's like you know within like how does it work you know i've never really i've never really thought about it too hard but maybe that's worth some investigation because that doesn't really make sense did somebody just create like a donut within the sea level that is kind of like its own keystone so it like just stays where it is in the planet or does it like connect to the core or something like how does that work there are no there are no other <coughs> continents to use as reference everything else is islands so we have no idea what the uh, the, the structure of the sea floor is like in most places because we've only seen it around um, Fish Fishman Man. Island when the straw hit, when the straw hats went there. So we don't really know how any of this works, which I find disconcerting. Very convenient for Ola to go. Oh, by the way, this is why the um, the all blue works here. That's like great. Granted, you didn't <laughs> tell me eighty percent of the information until now, but I'll take your word for it. That is definitely one thing about the final saga of One Piece. I am extremely happy that we're finally here, but sad at the so same good. time because I've been, yeah. more, like I said, I've been watching this since it first aired in America when I was a little kid. I didn't even know what was going on. I just watched it on Saturday car, Saturday morning mm-hmm. cartoons, and it's finally coming to an end. But now that means we're going to find everything about Laugh Tale, Roger, Rocks. Of the red line emu the gorosei we literally Thanks. have a gorosei moving right now toward uh, oh, supposedly so towards egghead and so you know that's something we gotta um, mention just in brief because we don't have too much information about it but i definitely say think it should be stated the the guy that's coming here now to egghead i believe is the same one that killed cobra the same shadowy gorosei figure that killed cobra Right. So there was a lot of debate back and forward about are these all even shadows? No, no, they're actually the God or say there's the right number. And it's all consistent. I think we can accurately say now that they were. But that tail was not Emu's. That was a very interesting thing that I noticed. That the tail that actually attacked him was not Emu's tail. It was it was one of the Gorosei. Um, I think I should actually pull up the chapter so I can. Um... I actually done a theory video on Emu like five months ago. That mm-hmm. was talking about where she come from, or like what her devil fruit and character ability is going to be based off. And it's like Shi Wangmu, the it's a Chinese goddess who actually controls the five heavenly stars which is the gorosei and yeah, she guards cool. the peaches of eternity which offer immortal life i believe and she's always seen in a garden so and it like, seems my theory exactly goes along like, with like yeah so and this this goes like and she was in love with the um it was like the I can't remember what they call him in Chinese mythology. I feel so bad because I like I've done a lot of research for this video, and it was basically the high god, basically. And I'm like, is that possible that she was a lover of Joy Boy in the past 800 years ago? Because Emu apparently has been a long, alive a long time. So, possibly, most likely, you know, I think we've entered a very interesting stage of One Piece, mostly be, be- just because we're going to get a lot of characters coming back that we haven't seen for a long time and we've already seen that with cobra and vv and things we've like seen that. crocodile um, roll back in crocodile. so i haven't so seen him for a long time yeah exactly exactly that and it's and it's that effectiveness of oh my god i for cp9 oh my god guys it's been yeah. a- in his lobby it's been ages I think that's what Oda is going to be putting a lot of at the moment, which is why he set up such a big and vast world. Further than Pretty that. much. And then in like two, three chapters, Devil Fruit. The Goroseis have Devil Fruit. Here's all their names. Here's all their jobs. Yeah. And it's like, Jesus, like I, we've been asking for answers for so long that I don't know if it's just me and not if it's anyone else, but I wasn't ready for all these answers. So oh, God, quickly. no. I mean, it, it's uh-huh. great because now we're not asking more and more questions we're actually getting answers and that's scary cobra died yeah people can die in one piece now there's nothing more yeah. terrifying Izo, um what's his name uh ashura doji yeah cobra like they're dropping like flies man this is terrifying we've been going now it's oda he'll be alive pell made an appearance for fuck's sake over a thousand chapters <laughs> later like come on Oda doesn't kill people. Oda's like, oh, really? No. Yeah. I was just saving them. 
I now, find it interesting. No the- I find it interesting that even he brought Wapple back. Like that's got me kind of mind blown because he's he's no, practically like was. worthless. But I'm like I feel like he could be useful if done correctly. And Oda doesn't do anything on accident. I don't think everything he's so, done comes full circle at some point in the manga. Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't know. Is <clears throat> Caribou? You remember Caribou, uh, the guy with the long tongue? Yeah, who, he's the guy who just keeps popping up. Yeah. But he's going to be incredibly important, the same way that we've known that Buggy is going yes, to be incredibly important. Yes, I agree. Because he keeps failing upwards. But he was there for the reveal of Luffy's dream. There yes. are 11 other people in the world who know that information. Like, that is incredibly specific information to have, right? Which yeah. means Caribou is going to be supremely important. At some he point. knows the location of two ancient weapons ancient as weapons. well. When and, I seen and, that, I was like, I did not think this guy was going to be that important. There's no way. When you see him in the archipelago at the beginning of the time, after the time skip, I'm like, ah, oh, this but is just going to be some to random Luffy's guy. Crew. Yeah. And he I'm was like, there to join what? the straw hat just under, <laughs> you know, somebody else was lying, yeah. but he was there to join. So maybe he's going to join. So now keep that in mind, right? Keep that importance in mind. Now look at Wapol. How many people know Imu's secret in the world? Yeah. Sabo? Now the revolutionaries, the other yep. two, and Wapol is the only other yep. person in the whole world who knows the, the that huge secret. I don't think that was the secret that uh, Do Flamingo knew. Um, I think no. that he knew some, you know, the the Joy Boy hat thing in the basement, yeah. whatever the hell. Yeah, what was that about? We'll, we'll get to that another time. I yeah. think he knew that. So Wapo has this incredibly important and precise information, which makes him one of the biggest key players in all of One Piece. And I can't tell you how annoyed I am at that because <laughs> Wapo is the fucking worst man. Like I hate him. Yes. And now he's integral and that's awful. So I think we're entering a very interesting point of One Piece and we're just going to be getting for sure huge, huge information drops from here because since the Nika reveal, the it's one been thing massive that lore drops since then. That's all. Exactly. That's it. Just lore, 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 lore drops. You want answers? But I'll give you answers. I, here they are. The thing that I loved the most about the Nika reveal, the thing that blew my mind about it, other than, you know, actually a mythical zone human. Yeah. There are two human human fruits on the crew. Like, what the hell? Yeah. The bigger thing for me was no matter how long you've been a fan of One Piece, no matter how long you've been reading it, whether it's been six months or a year or 10 years or 15 years, I mean, One Piece is the same age as me. It started releasing about a month after I was born. So Mm -hmm. it's been 26 years. It's been a long time. Yes. As you're reading all of that and experiencing all of this and going on that journey, you, you eventually get to the pinnacle of it with the Luffy and Kaido fight. And you see Luffy using this fruit in like such an interesting way. If you, if you pay real close attention to what he's doing, it's, mind-blowing how far this little kid has come yes and then you get that reveal of mythical zone and everything and that 25 years approximately of storytelling that we did up to there the whole thing flips you go all the way back to the first chapter and everything is irrevocably changed the whole series is different now and i thought that was is and is probably going to be one of the most incredible feats of writing that I'll ever hear about or experience in my life and for probably many lifetimes because Oda, it's the culmination of, you know, a quarter of a century of brilliant writing. And I think it was just so good. And now we've entered the stage after that, which adds really necessary and interesting context Mm. to all of that that has been flipped over because now we've got information on Alabasta from way long ago, even though we have the and we never touched on that you know we're going to get information that flips wano even though wano just happened we're going to get that flips our understanding of that so i think it's i think it's a fantastic time to be one piece fan. oh for sure like i've told my buddy that i'm like hey man if you want to get into one piece now is the actual time to do it because it's like awesome. and i like what oda says like even if you've never seen one piece up to this point before the final saga that is okay you don't need to and from like he is like it's done like small flashbacks without being a flashback to let you know what's going on yeah Yeah. 
but like like you said the culmination of all that for anybody who's been into one piece for this long when all this while all that happened with the nika fruit and like everything is just like holy crap i remember this way back then that i thought yeah. would not mean much but it 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 makes the whole thing work it brings yeah. it full circle it makes it make sense now thing. he he flipped things and he flipped our understanding of things and he deepened our understanding of things that we'd forgotten there yes. are so many things about one piece that i was like i i reread a meme or something i'm like oh my god that happened yeah like when frankie built those stairs in thrill of bark despite how amazing and funny that is i often forget that yeah. in all the other stuff that happens so he's oda pays such interesting attention to his writing because uh, like i've been a fan of one piece for well over a decade now um you know i'm i'm collecting the physical copies i've you know i've got two yeah. studios with posters on the wall like you know not that that's a huge achievement or anything it's just that i'm very into one piece i'm yep. phenomenally into one piece and i think it's great and Oda still, not even just surprises me, Oda shocks me. Yes. I'm still reading new chapters and, I, and I've, I'm blown away. Yes. Despite how much attention I pay to the series and how much I try to look ahead, Oda still can pull the rug out from under my feet so it, it, regularly. It, and I think that is wonderful. When we got the Nika reveal, that one definitely got me. I was like, mm -hmm. that the, the thought of like Looney Tunes was nowhere in my head. I was like, so, so we've well. seen Doflamingo use his awakening and he turns stuff to string. So I'm like, mm -hmm. what use would it be for Luffy just to turn his environment to rubber? How is that really going to give him an advantage in his fight it, against Kaido? It's okay. But it's not great. Yeah. If, if and that the, was all he got, he'd have lost. Yeah, I'd have been like, yeah. Because, yeah, we've seen him do that with the ground. He he moved it in, like, ricochet blast breath. But that you still see that amazing. wasn't enough. But it was, yes, well, it was see, amazing. That's the, uh, that's the thing. That's a lot more amazing than it seems. Yes. I think. Because it, I think it, the, the property of rubber that it got was so much more interesting than I think I give it credit for. So it's it's somewhere between what we just described, what we used to call in the community as rubber world, where he would be able to affect things other than himself. Mm -hmm. And it would work really well for him. And it does, because he does the bouncy castle thing. And yeah. It's as wacky as what it would be. But it's more useful than I thought, because he, he stretched the ground and reflected yes. a Yonko attack. That's insane. And That's then, great. I don't know if you've seen yeah. this past week's episode yet. Yeah. Okay. He shot the blast bath through the freaking Onigashima. The entire Onigashima. That's so exactly that's how what strong that attack probably was that he shot at yeah. gear five. And he, and he just like it. pulls the ground up and shoots it back at him. Exactly. That, and that and attack exactly previously went saying. through that ground. Straight through. But he went and it with reflect. It. Yes. yes. So, so that's what I mean when, when the community and myself used to think rubber world would be the extent of his awakening he yes. couldn't affect other things great i didn't think of it like that yes i knew that he could hit people and they could bounce back and then he could hit them again or he could get hit and bounce back you know the way he's using yeah. it in the fight but it was never convincing enough for me to go yeah that's going to be the awakening yeah this um, is I the power to did, overcome the entire it. world that yeah that definitely yeah. wasn't in my mind that he could do that it's with still, that it still needs refinement but the thing that i found incredible from a writing perspective is we needed to square that with all the lore on and how we integrate that with the actual series you know mm -hmm. and i thought that was an interesting thing because i thought we would separate them and it would be Luffy is the inherited will of Joy Boy and everything, but he's going to awaken his fruit to be like the resin fruit. Yeah. And he's going to take off the Katakuri uh, and everything he learned in that fight and like adapt it to his own. That's where I thought we were going. Yeah. Maybe that and or the rubber world ability. And I thought if he can make things rubber as well as do that rubber thing, it's a little bit there, nah, but it might be powerful enough. He might, yeah. he might be able to make it there. I think Oda did a, spe a spectacular job because he took the, our expectations of the devil fruit, surpassed them, and connected it to the story in an integral yes. way. And made it cartoony. And he yes. broke the fourth, wall w w the fourth wall with this whole manga universe thing and the cartoony powers in such a brilliant way. And it's added on top of that with the ability to make you smile, the warrior of liberation. Yes. Because that's what Luke has been doing the whole time. He fought Crocodile 
and he was doing such wacky things that Nico Robin, the war criminal scarred woman of the world, the devil child Nico Robin, was giggling away at Luffy's silly antics. And that's what it yes. is. He made someone as broken and scarred and untrusting as Robin laugh and trust again through the wacky way that he uses his rubber body. And that's all he's ever done. So to reach that pinnacle of the fruit, fighting Kaido in a battling sense, at the same time doing it, uh, uh, you know, for the sake of the people and to make people smile. Yes. God damn, Oda. Like, man, god damn. Man, one of the things I've job. said a few times, I've talked to people, I've talked to other fans, I'm like, one of the things I think that are possible, what he even means by making things like making people smile is not only the people in the manga but like almost like a fourth wall like the ability to make the crowd smile exactly. because there's no exactly. time when i see that smile that luffy has the joy boy smile bro i'm just yeah. like bro that that makes me smile like there's just something about but it like the power fit luffy so well the tune thing and like the i don't know everything just come together so well for the Nico ability 100% and I I think it, the Luffy vs Kaido is the perfect setting for that as well because do you remember the tension a few months back when we're, we're still I mean it's a little while ago now but when we were getting the Luffy vs Kaido and we were all getting hyped because we knew Gear 5 was coming yes we had the melted hair thing happen and we were like resin fruit confirmed this thing fruit yeah. confirmed we were, we were sold <laughs> but there was the tension there were people that I mean, there was the whole famous the raid will fail thing. There were yeah, there was so much that, tension yeah. in the fight. Two weeks later, three weeks later, we're laughing at Luffy using the, the Yonko Kaido as a skipping rope. Yes, that is that's skipping ridiculous. Rope, sticking his hands through his eyeballs and grabbing his nose, like it and was Oda insane. made us laugh. He made us smile when Luffy died two weeks ago. Like. He took that insane pressure and stress and push and God, is Luffy going to make it? How is Luffy going to make it? What are we going to do? Yes. And he made us smile. And I, I don't think he could have done a better job. No, and I think not. I think was, it was it phenomenal. Was absolutely amazing. And, and, and that's why it extends all the way out to the readers now because even when you watch him fighting NL, Crocodile, Katakuri was a bit more serious. Yeah. But uh, Cracker, Cracker was a wild goofy yes, fight. That, to eat yeah, his way out of two fights in that arc. Yes. And it <laughs> makes you smile as a reader who's watching these desperate situations. And I think that that's why he's the true incarnation of that warrior of liberation. Because even yes. in a Luffy vs. Kaido, the guy that everybody says, bet on him in a one-on-one, -on -one, yep. and Luffy can still make you smile. I think yes. it's incredible. And the tension, not only around that, but like the tension of what's at stake in Wano during the whole time is like starving. And then the anime, they kind of cut it down. But in the manga, you have people like like killing themselves, killing their children. I was talking about that a and, while ago. And yeah. In the anime, they kind of cut it down. And I understand why, you know, sometimes I guess, you know, but whatever. But you want a bit of a so border much appeal, was going on. I feel like yeah we lose so much of the the the, the depth of the severity of the situation yes. like you that that panel i even made a post on reddit a while ago about like that's what i don't like about the anime because it takes real gut punch moments like that yes. away in some places it can elevate it can do a wonderful job this last episode was amazing the small details of kaido and everything fantastic when you see <laughs> his face change from ha like that sadness in his eyes mm. that struck me i was like holy crap i feel the sorrow in this man right now like it was so done exactly. so good but then you do it stuff like that done, <laughs> yeah so it can be done so well to it, it elevate something small that you might not notice to be more impactful but like that woman getting ready to like off herself and her kid because yes. they were just starving and struggling like that hits so hard it as does. well. So there's there's obviously the, the the balance between the two. The fights that are going to take place in the future because for for instance, Kaido and Big Mom, they didn't use observation hockey. They didn't use things. They just tanked it. Somebody like Shanks no, is not going to tank, yeah. though. He's not no, going to tank right. an attack. They would tank stuff. I don't think you're going to see P I don't think you're going to see many punching bags from here on out. Like just for the sake of punching that. bags. I think we're going to see people using because more advanced versions of hockey that's yeah. like, "Oh, you're not going to hurt me. I'm not going to let you hurt me." You know, so kind of did. did. That. 
we did see that with Katakuri, but in a very specific case. Yes. But even as we got in this chapter, how is the clear, clear fruit? How is how does that interact with Haki? What's the point of an invisible fruit if you can still sense them? You know, what I'm it's thinking about really the invisible fruit like is like because it's just, it's a paramecia. We know paramecia affects the environment. What if the person with the invisible fruit can make the entire area? like almost like an invisible fighting area and you can't even see what you're doing at all it's like fighting in pure darkness but not in pure darkness you, you, no, know, you even, just can't see worse. anything Cause, yeah because there's still things still yeah, throw things at you yeah. And, and you never see you, anything and you still can't see what's happening and i think happening. but that they can, would they be can what mix pushes in... zoro to actually obtain good observation hockey so we could have it and use it more or like we yeah, actually see him use you... it i mean he's got decent i mean even when hody was throwing the uh Yarusame, Yabusame, what is it? The shark arrows at him. And he just used the... Oh, my sword's too far. He just used the hilt <laughs> yeah. of the sword. Man, I've, got a, I've got a little one here. And he just kind of used the hilt of the sword to block all of them. Mm -hmm. Like, that was really cool. That's obviously observation hacking. Yeah. Um, but he doesn't use future sight. He doesn't, like... Really That's what the, I meant, future the, sight. I'm sorry. I should have been more specific. Yeah. No, no, no. So, like, I think it would be interesting, but does he... Does he need it? Does Mihawk have it? Like, what is what does Zoro need from here? I think the biggest thing, and I'm going to very briefly touch on Zoro because, um, oh, unfortunately, I, I usually have his earrings on, but one of them broke literally yesterday. Dang, uh, bro, that sucks. So unfortunate. So now um, my Wado Ichimonji, my little Wado Ichimonji looks after my earrings. I've got a second nice. pair, so that's nice. Um, but yeah, I can talk about Zoro for a long time, so I'll just very briefly mention it. The only thing I can see Zoro getting from here is black blades, permanent black blades. Yes. That's, I think he now has the mechanism of how to blacken blades. You need, you need Conqueror's Haki, for one, I think is very helpful. But you need to understand Haki and the flow and how to use it to the level that he is now to really start getting the Haki to be more permanent. Yeah. Because Enma is still not a black blade. He had, you know... Um, before Zoro had Enma, Enma had Odin's Haki just flowing through it. And that's intense Haki and really yes. strong. And that shows you the distance and gap Zoro has at the moment for me to show you Odin constantly using it and Zoro only being able to use it for a short amount of time. Like how much I further he's got to go. Not, I don't I think, think it's a whole long ways, one. but you still have a little ways to go before you're that strong. Before exactly. you can compete so, with the best. You still have a little bit to you, go you've hit that tier you, you've entered the realm of pure of true strength yes. where garp is zoro and garp are in the same tier now i would say and i don't really have like a set tier structure or anything but i think they've they're in that same level of immense strength yes through I agree. particular means the same way that kuzan as we flash brilliant four panels of of i don't know if you noticed these kuzan hitting the battleship bags and it goes like black and then you hear gops, boom. And then it goes to the next one, and it's like whack. And you hear boom. And then yeah. the next panel, then you get that progression of it getting in the final panel. You see boom, boom, and you, you know yeah. that Alkiji has trained under Gop to the point where they're at that yeah. same level yeah. of strength. The only difference is this is where Zoro is now. You may be in that top tier of strength. But you're the weakest guy in that, in that tier. You yeah, just entered that. It's kind of so like how has... One Punch Man has it. We've got uh, the S tier heroes. Right. You're down here yeah. at the S tier. Well, yeah. Mihawk's still up here. You still got to go through yeah, like exactly. this many guys. Yeah, and you still got to do that much growing. The same way that Luffy has advanced Conqueror's hockey. Great. He's got literally every type of hockey that's ever been mentioned. I'm pretty sure, but. That's great. You've got gear five. You've got your awakening. You have an awakened fruit and you have access to all of these new powers. That's fantastic. You have no experience using them. You fought two people, <laughs> two people yeah. with those powers, and you have That's no it. idea how to use them yet or what their extent or any level beyond that would be. What is the next level? Like, I don't think what we've seen is hockey. They're like, we haven't even, like, like hit the surface of what I think Oda is going to show what hockey can do just because like for the example of the hockey talkie that they said Shanks done that and we've never seen anybody else do that but I think he's going to use Shanks to showcase just how much you can do with hockey like I don't think we've like I think he's going to show us things we didn't think was possible 
is what I here's, possibly think is what's going to go on. Here's an interesting way of looking at it. What if he shows us exactly what we've seen before many times? What if this hockey talkie, which, by the way, brilliant name. I've never heard of that. I love that. <laughs> what if that is the same as the voice of all things? What if that is the same as what Luffy was doing on Onigashima to talk to Momo? And a, just a lot of didn't people even realize him. it. He like broadcasted to everyone in Onigashima and he had no idea. What if that's exactly what Shanks did? Luffy just did it subconsciously. What if when Zunisha speaks and people with, you know, the voice of all things mm. hear him, what if it's exactly the same thing, just applied in a different way or to a different level? That's good. Man, um, I never so even I thought think... about that, to be honest, that it could be like some advanced version of observation hockey or something. I think that's what Oda does really well, where he'll show you something and he'll be like, oh, what's this? Myster mysterious. You know, I'll explain it one day. And then 600 chapters later, he shows <laughs> yeah, you something and someday. goes, by the way, those two things were the same thing. I'm just showing it to you again yeah. now and explaining it. I think it might be that. So either we've now just entered that top tier level of hockey where we understand that you can coach yourself in conquerors, which why did I never think of that? That's so obvious. Yeah. Why did I never think about that? Um, and we're starting to explain those things the same way that devil fruits were mysterious. And they were like, oh, how does this devil fruit work? It's like stands from JoJo's. It's like, oh, there's a stand working. You don't know what it is or what it does, but it's mysterious. Like, I think yeah. it's very much like that because that's that's what Oda does. He, he, he puts like. something down and he just doesn't say anything about it for 20 years. Uh, and we build Pretty up all these much. expectations and all these assumptions. And he goes, yeah, it's, it's just a kettle that yeah. accidentally ate the devil fruit. Nothing, nothing to be concerned about. And then five years later, he goes, oh my God, it was the biggest news ever. I can't believe you didn't understand this. Ah, I got you. This, this point that we're about to reach now, because you and I are both like, when we talk to a new One Piece fan or talk to somebody that we're recently acquainted to and they're like, oh, I watch One Piece. You don't immediately go, oh my God, how is that mythical zone fruit reveal? You, you try to see where they yeah, are. Like, how far are you into One Piece before yeah. I speak? And they're exactly. like, oh, well, I just got to where all the people turn to animals. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Oh, you're in his lobby. Okay, so I know what I can lobby. talk okay. to you about. Yeah. I can talk to you about not that much, but, yeah. you know, at least we have that set. So I think we're about to hit a very interesting change because it's this week and then Luffy, you know, is still dead and we cut around the castle and Kaido shoots a fire, a borrow breath at Nami and all that kind of stuff. And a week after that, it's Gear 5. Yep. Even the One Piece subreddit will consider that not spoilers anymore because it's been animated. Which, by the way, guys, fucking arbitrary rule. You really got to look at that. That makes no sense. But anyway, <laughs> we're about to reach a point where we don't have to... I mean, I still will because I want people to be able to start from 1 and come yes. all the way up to 100. And, uh, it's going to be 103 to where Gear 5 actually is. I want people to have the same experience I did. I want people to read this and, and build up that journey and, and get this endearing rubber kid into their lives and then get the reveal of the, the whole Mika situation because it changes things. It changes a lot of things. And I think having that first experience of the story is so important. Yes. Um, but we're about to do that huge shift where everyone's going to be talking about it because it's going to be animated. It's going to be sent everywhere. Yep. There's probably going to be a new emoji on WhatsApp and Instagram and everything. Of <laughs> it's going to be everywhere. So. Oh, yeah. It's going to be one of those things that break the internet type of thing. Exactly. That, yeah. Because it already almost did while we were trying to keep it suppressed. Yes. So I think it's going to be very interesting. But we're about to hit a huge shift. Just the way that we're getting answers from Oda, we're about to hit a big shift in like the consciousness of what does and doesn't constitute spoilers because Nika will no longer be spoilers. Nope. And that's going to be a very weird world. Yeah, for sure. I think that, Can we I talk about know. what a monster Garp is? <laughs> Oh my gosh! Like the dude, what's I think it's like what's the big the big guy he threw in the ocean? What's his name? Watatsumi uh, or something? San, San Juan Wood. Yeah, uh, Watatsumi was the other big guy from Fishman Island. Yeah, dude, like the fact that he just chunked that guy in the ocean. That alone is a test of how strong he is. And what's it, even more than that is he went and attacked a group of devil fruit users, and he chucked the biggest, heaviest one straight. We gotta get Wolf out the ocean. Like, yeah. 
ow, what yeah. are we going to do? Like, that was a brilliant move. Not only was it hard to do, but he knocked him straight out of there. What a brilliant play by Yeah, I know. They're like, hey, go get him. He's going to drown. And I'm like, how are you going to get him out of the water? How are you going to do what that? What do you want me to do? Like, There's use your devil fruit. There's nobody else there big enough to get him out. Aokiji could probably do it. Or he could freeze him just yeah. so he doesn't drown, at least, I, I, I guess. Um, I didn't see him do anything. But to be fair, he wasn't really stopping Garp either. But I think the moment that really hit me was when Vasco shot, you know, the, the, the drunk guy who has the best laugh in One Piece. Uh, the topo, topo, topo yeah. guy. He spits that fireball at Garp. And Garp kind of sees this. He goes, oh, interesting. He grabs well, it's a good thing there's some pirate scum right yeah. there. And he just holds them <laughs> up and they get blasted. And I was like, are you the good guy? I mean, I get I know, first, right? I was like, man, that was kind of brutal. <laughs> That was hard, man. He didn't give a fuck, man. He just went in there and he was like, oh, okay. Oh, and these are a pretty good weapon. And he starts throwing them at people. Like, I'm pretty sure both of those are against the Geneva Convention. Like, that shit is hard. Yes. That definitely was, it, that definitely kind of was like, wow. Okay, then. But even more than that, you know what? These last few chapters of seeing Garp and getting the explanation and seeing how the Marines see him was when Luffy was running up the execution platform of that th lands in front of him and was like Luffy you're gonna have to hit me you're gonna have to do this yeah. and there was the whole emotional exchange to all the grunt marines imagine you're just like a seaman recruit you've heard about Garp obviously through all the propaganda you know who he is basically so at marine fort I really understand more now what the grunt marines and like the less experienced marines were were going through because Garp kind of appears on that stairs thing in front of Luffy and he's like, Luffy, you gotta you gotta hit me to continue. Like this is the choice yeah. you gotta make. It was like really hard line, right? Um, and it, you know, as much as there was the emotional and everything and Garp did let him hit him, we saw a little upstart 17-year-old pirate invade Marine Ford and while Garp Yonko down. was waiting and knock Garp, the hero of the Marines straight off the plinth yep and before i was like yeah it, it's a pretty big moment he, he's he's a vice admiral it's huge but now i get it now i see why god valley battleship bags i see how the marines see Garp. yeah and retroactively everything else i see has changed the way he hit luffy when he was young and it was always ah the fist of love it's because of his hockey that that he's hitting luffy it's actually made me question if you actually are physically strong enough, can you hit through that devil fruit thing, right? Genuinely, let's ask the question now. Is Gob stronger than Kaido? Like yeah. physical strength output. Is Gob stronger than Kaido? Because I think he might be. That is very it's actually possible. Kind of wild. Uh, well, so you know, I always fall wonder, on the like, level of Roger, you know, they were rivals. So, exactly. you know, that attests to Garp's strength alone. You know, because Roger was at the top of the world, never used Devil Fruit. He conquered the world. And Garp was right there, fist to fist, you know, basically. So they at least are on that same kind of level, even if they're not exactly comparative mm -hmm. in strength. But also, let's look back at that Chin Zhao scene. Remember when he, when he beat Chin Zhao and he, like, flattened yeah. the nail on his head? He says, I hit eight mountains for, to train for this. I always assumed he was using hockey, but then we get to the battleship bag. And he like, said, no fruit, it's not, no hockey. Yeah, if you use fruit or hockey, it's not training. So the dude just hit, this dude just punched mountains. Hit mountains with yeah. no hockey. Like, what the fuck is this, man? Like, it's, this is, this is power scaling. I always say, well, I don't always say, I often say that power scaling is the homeopathy of One Piece. It's the most boring, uninteresting part, and it like really doesn't feel like you can match much to much. You know, it just feels it's, like arbitrary. It's not as this cut and dry as stuff like Dragon Ball Z. That's for sure. Yeah. It's definitely not the My same. My power level, higher than your power level. I scream for a bit and get longer hair. My power level, higher, I win. Simple. Yeah. This is how you actually do power scaling. You actually mention all these hockey and things, and then you go, this guy doesn't do any of that. Yes, he's got conquerors. He's using insane levels of hockey but that's not why he's strong he's strong yeah he's strong because without he did that. that training yeah exactly so now that's like that's his tools the galaxy to make that's yeah the hockey and stuff is just like his tools that's all yeah he uses the it as main a tool instead of his strength. strength yeah so 
the galaxy impact was huge because he had that massive distance between him and the ground where the hockey hit, which is very different to what Luffy and Kaido were doing. Mm -hmm. I don't think Kaido is that much of a wuss though. I don't, I don't think no. it's hockey that he's lacking there. I think that difference, that the difference between you know Kaido and Luffy's clash and what Garp did by himself with the ground. Yeah, I think that's physical based, and that's one of the reasons I think Garp is so much stronger than Kaido. Not a really well formed thing, but now that I think about it, with how we're like scaling Garp and how we're showing his feats and stuff like that, I'd be concerned because it feels like Garp is either going to hang on, hang, hand on the torch now or die or you know something to that effect like we're 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 ending the old era and starting the yes. new yes and Luffy's it, like, not just doing that he? very slowly but very smooth because yeah. you see Akainu is now head of the marines the old has moved out the, Garp is on the verge of death because that is definitely a fatal wound a sword through the chest and he doesn't look too good laying on the ground saying hey justice will prevail he looks like he's hurt really bad kaido and big mom have been moved out and phased out so all the new old generation is being phased out slowly i'm i'm honestly crazy. ready to see where the manga goes because it said the things that happen on the day that's happening right now in the manga is going to shake the entire of the world so i'm very interested in what what's to gonna come what's is going to flip us i think really going to surprise us and flip us again and be like oh my god like you know it's gonna have that effect on us the military is currently throwing literally everything, everything. in the fucking kitchen sink at them because it's a yonko because it's luffy and because it's all of that so how is how story-wise from oda's mind think back to shibodi where the military threw their might at luffy for the attack of the celestial dragon right mm -hmm. the crew was destroyed they were scattered it was, the narrator came on and was like, yeah, they got their shit kicked in. Like, yeah. It didn't go well. The military is now throwing all of their might specifically straight at Luffy. Vegapunks yes. there, Vegapunks are driving force, but they're throwing everything. They could have sent more admirals. They're spread quite thin at the moment, but they're throwing everything story-wise at yes. Luffy right now. I think this is the moment where the Grand Fleet arrives and Luffy makes a Yonko stand. So now on top of that... He's where Vegapunk is saving him from their assassins just by coincidence. So I think the big event is the military attacking Luffy. And I think because of the way Oda has introduced it to us, that it's the start of the final war. Yes. Because it's going to be one of the biggest things that happened. It's a turning point in history. I think that means... You know what? I've just this literally just dawned on me, like connecting the dots, because we have Yonko Luffy with his crew and everything there with Vega Punk. The Grand Fleet can arrive to oppose the um, the the what's it called? The Marines. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a Luffy standoff. Blackbeard is just around the corner. Shanks is just around the corner. Buggy would then likely follow not too far yeah. behind with Cross Guild. And the entire war might start here at Egghead. But there's so many ways to go because I would want Egghead to launch up into space. So we have a space adventure with Vegapunk and the crew before starting all that stuff. That would be great. That would be wacky. That would be. But I feel like the war starting is more likely. Yeah. Kobe's just around there. Garp is literally one island over being stabbed and everything. Like there's so much going on. The mother frame could even be what comes and stops the Hachinosu. Like, there are so many things that could happen. But I think the really big, important event that's happening less than 24 hours from now in the main story is, like, it's the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, which many debate is not what actually started the war. But societally, we accept that it is. Yes. So it's going to be that. It's going to be the war trigger. And... Um, <laughs> You won't be surprised to hear that it was Luffy and Luchi yeah. that actually started the whole thing. But I think we're going to see a lot of things that make us reconsider things. And a lot of things that go, oh, is that how that always worked? Like when we discover what devil fruits are actually for, what, why did they make them in the ancient kingdom? Because devil fruits are a science. They mm -hmm. were designed to fix a problem. What problem were you having that you need to turn into a jacket man? <laughs> Who wanted? That's the worst thing. Somebody wanted to be a jacket so yeah. badly 
that it manifested into a fruit. A fruit. There's I really want to beat this person. Like, I'm interested to see where we go from Egghead. Because, like, just the battle. Like, I'm, I think about the battles of Blackbeard's crew members along with what's to come from Luffy's crew. Because they have the same amount of members, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, we just seen a gigantic mech that was, like, all messed up and destroyed in Egghead. Now I'm like... Frankie versus Island Man with a giant mech. I'm like, we got Gundams fighting islands. That's what goes on yeah, in my head. I'm like, that would be freaking epic, you know, to see so, like but, a spin on a Gundam that looks like something yeah, yeah. goofy Frankie like, would make with like some kind of goofy, kind yeah, of something like a Power Ranger. Yeah, I got a chest, I got a cannon of a duck on my chest. Who knows, man? Shooting yeah. Coca Cola blasts like, out of an island. <laughs> so I was I was thinking the other day when we read when I read this chapter for the first time because we there was there was actually so much good power scaling in these chapters we saw they were talking about the town I think it was actually a couple of chapters ago where they were talking about oh Kobe's running a muck down there maybe I should just go find him they're like no 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 you can't do that you're gonna cause too much damage yeah. oh what if I do it's like oh what's your plan oh, I'll just burn the town down. Like, he can't hide then. And and we went up and up and up in describing just how horrible these people are, but more importantly, the scale of destruction that they can do. Because Shiryu is very close quarters. Like, he did yes. a number on God, don't get me wrong. But that's his focus. He's precise, devastating attacks. Yes. Then you get Zaro, who can turn the town into arms and, like, destroy shit. Dude, yeah. the Vasco who can burn it down and you get san juan wolf the colossal battleship who's massive and and we went up and up and up in how dangerous these black yeah. pirates are and i was just sitting there going who's gonna fight these guys yeah, like, exactly who on our crew's gonna fight against these monsters because vasco shot i mean other like other than the rapey stuff that he said about boa hancock recently like he's a very concerning dude like he's dangerous <laughs> yes Who's gonna fight him? Is it gonna be Usopp? Like, how's this gonna go? Probably Van Auger, but like, Brooke? Like, who on our lovable crew of goofy idiots is gonna face these actual villains? The like, only I just, people I, I can safely so like even pair is Luffy and Blackbeard, Shooter You and Zoro, um, Burgess and Sanji, I think are is a very good, I think it would. Since, like, yeah. Burgess is Arms first mate, legs. correct? I you know, I so yeah. I think that'd be a good one. And then I can't remember the sniper and freaking Blackbeard's crew. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah, and then Usopp. The rest, I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen, to be honest. Katarina Devon has to fight one of the women, right? Especially because her whole thing is beheading really beautiful women that she thinks are more beautiful than deal. Um, but also, she's deceptive. She has the fruit changing thing. And Nami is very susceptible to like yeah. fighting kids and stuff. She didn't even want to fight Seraphim Jinbei because he was a kid. Uh, so there's a lot of psychological uh, and actual strength difference between them. So I could I only think that really would be a good matchup Nami between them two just for the struggle. Because not, like point. Robin, even when she was being hypnotized, she knew it wasn't real. Like she that could was determine so it wasn't though. real. So yeah. Like, I feel like Robin could fight somebody like her and be like, okay, Robin I know this is just a trick. I'm going to break your neck with my little <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Yeah, clutch. But Nami know? would straight fall for it. I, I think she's yeah. still so gullible. Yeah, so it's an issue. Like, I do wonder. Maybe, though, like, Jinbei versus San Juan Wolf. Because if Garp can topple him out the island, I would say one of the next best candidates would be Jinbei. I mean, yes. he threw Big Mom off of the Sunny. Like, yes. that in and of itself was, that was a epic, feat, man. That was insane. But I really, I fear for the crew. You know, I know they're strong. I know we've taken all these years and all these feats and all these hard fought and hard won battles for them to get to this level of strength. And it's taken an insane amount of luck. Um, but I still worry. Like, we took down Kaido, and I used to be worried that, like, you know, it's the Thanos problem. Who's going to be a bigger issue than Kaido? Who's going to be more yeah. worrying than Kaido? And I look at the Blackbeard Pirates, and I'm like, maybe Kaido wasn't so bad. He was enslaving and killing people, but the Blackbeard Pirates are a lot worse, you know? Oh, I agree. 
I don't know what I'm going to do with my life after that. <laughs> what do I, what do I look forward to? Like, yeah, marriage and children and things, but one piece, man, there's going to be no new chapters. What am I going to get like, excited about? This is going to take up 30 years of my life and then it's just not going to happen anymore. And some people are oh, like, no. let's get a sequel. I'm like, no, 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 no. no. See, no. That's the Leave only thing piece. that's worse is if it didn't end. Yes. No, there's only like, one thing I'd want to see from one piece. And that's a small prequel about Roger's journey. That's the only thing I want to see. A hundred percent with Everything you. Else, I would watch the shit out of that. But I because then you can Rocks get possibly be he's going to use that like he did Odin. I think he's going to do show us God Valley but, like he did Odin. Mm, I, my, mm. That's my thoughts. On it. I think he first has to take a bit of the mystery out of it, especially because of how long we've been going. It is one of the bigger mysteries that's hiding things in the main story. So I think he's going to get through the main story so we get that full impact. And then it's going to be, by the way, God Valley, if you're interested, because that's not the, you know, there's that good writing advice of, are you, are you talking about and showing the most interesting part of your character's life? If not, why? Why aren't you showing us that if that was more interesting? So if God Valley really is more interesting, we'll definitely see it. But if we're going to go beyond that and kind of surpass that, and 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 get higher than that without the context then i think it's better to go back afterwards and go yeah here's all the things that you knew like roger's execution how many times have we seen it a lot. yes it's hugely impactful but we've seen it to death yeah and the best times to revisit that are at very key moments in the story where you flash back and you've you've had all this build up and all this context and then you go ah and this this is why the execution was so important. And this is why the great age of piracy started. Despite knowing, you know, dragon was there, crocodile was there, um, you know, uh, was Garp there? Who knows? It, there were a lot of people there. Despite knowing that they're there, we go seven, 800 chapters in, and then we show, oh, look, here's them at the execution platform. And mm -hmm. it doesn't change anything. We've already discovered like they kind of had to be, or yeah. we thought they would. But then we're flashing back to it with that context, and that's what makes us really feel it. There's so I do one, think we'll get God Valley, but later. There's one thing about the um, execution that I found interesting about Crocodile is it didn't show his face at the execution. I love that. Oh, I, I, I was so drawn into that. that. Ties to Ivankov. Yeah. And so it didn't show his face. I'm like, bro, what mm, is very that? suspicious. What is saving something for Crocodile? And I just, even I more expect. than that, even more than that, we saw S. Croc in two chapters ago. The chapter before this, we saw S. Crocodile. We saw the other Seraphim for the ones that we hadn't seen before yeah. from the OG Warlords. And Crocodile looks suspiciously feminine. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe that's just me. But as soon as I read that, I was like, Oda, I can see it. We're setting it up. I know it. You can't hide this from me. Yes. And he's going to be baiting us. And he's going to be like, nah, he was male the whole time. I really wonder what Oda thinks about the Croco Mom theory. Oh, guys, I think that's going to be all we're going to talk about today. Um, we kind of ventured off a lot, but, hey, we, we, we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to talk about in the future. I'm, this is a new partnership. But, um, I, I, I'm going to let you say your name because I don't want to, like, totally, like, butcher your username. That would be uh, Shimotsuki Kajia. I know everyone, everyone struggles with it at first. Yeah, I didn't want to mess it up, but this is a future hopefully to, uh, we're gonna get to do this at least once or twice a week that would be awesome um but yeah guys i hope y'all enjoyed this video because we had a great time discussing this we got a lot of topics Absolutely. from this video that we can just literally multiverse out of this thing you know it we, you know we can do a lot with it and um i look For forward sure. to doing more you know a lot Absolutely. I'm looking forward to uh, I'm looking forward to it too, rather. And uh, thanks for the time. And uh, thank you to anyone else out there who watched it. Much appreciated. Yes. And, uh, hope you have Very a good one. So, later, guys. Peace. Cheers.